Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at equivalent fractions and how to actually match the fractions and make sure that you got the correct answer because sometimes it may seem that they're the correct answer but that is not the case. Like for example when 4 out of 9 becomes a 3 out of 8. Is 4 over 9 equivalent to 3 over 8? No, that's not the case because the proportions are different. Don't worry about that right now. I'm going to explain to you as you watch the video. So here, let's start with 3 over 6, right? 3 is half of 6. So keep that in mind as we go through this. 3 being half of 6, we want to find out which of these bottom fractions are equivalent to 3 over 6. So first, we have another fraction, 3 over 5. That's going to be not equivalent because we have the bottom number that changed but the top number stayed the same. Whenever one number changes and the other does not, that automatically would rule out it being an equivalent fraction. So we can put an X over that one. That's not gonna be an equivalent fraction. Now we have four over nine. Is that an equivalent fraction? Well, no, it's not. There is nothing that is equivalent about it. Because 3, for example, you can think of it this way. 3 is half of 6, right? So the top number is half of the bottom number, right? So is 4 half of 9? No, it's not half of 9. So it does not grow proportionally. The key to proportional equivalent fractions is that they would represent the same type of proportion except with different numbers. In this case, 4 over 9 does not represent 1 half. So that would not be the case. Now we arrive at 6 over 12. Is 6 half of 12? Yes, it is. Is 3 half of 6? Yes. So if the top number is 1 half of the bottom number, it would automatically make it into an equivalent fraction. So we're going to put a check mark there. This is one of the equivalent fractions. You can also look at it this way. What did we do to the 3? to get to the six. Think about it. You can pause the video if you need to think about it. What operation do we do to the three in terms of multiplication or division to get to the six? In this case, it's multiplication. If you answered multiply by two, that's correct. You would multiply three by two to get to the six. Now here's the rule for equivalent fractions. Whatever you do to the top number, you do to the bottom number or vice versa. They have to have the same operation for both when you're checking for the fraction. So when you multiply the 3 by 2, you get 6. When you multiply the 6 by 2, you get 12, right? So automatically it checks out. Not only is it exactly one half, the top number and the bottom number are exactly matching by the top number being one half of the bottom number, they also can be easily checked by multiplying the 3 by 2 and the 6 by 2. And that would give us. 6 over 12. All right. And now on to the last one. Now this last one here, what is going on here? Well, we have, again, pause the video and see if you can uh, figure it out if this is a equivalent fraction, the 2 over 4. And if you answered yes, you got it right because this is an equivalent fraction. Whoops. This is an equivalent fraction. 3 is half of 6, 2 is half of 4, right? So automatically, it would be equivalent. Now, if you want to find out how it's scaling, you can see that the 3 becomes a 2. And the 2 is 2 thirds of the 3, right? And the 4 is 2 thirds of the 6, right? Because if we count by 2, I'm going to write it down here, 2, 4, 6, right? 2 and 4 would be 2 out of the 3 numbers. So they would equal to 2 thirds. If we count by 1's for the 3, 1, 2, 3, right? The 1 and 2 would equal to 2 thirds of the 3. So 2 and the 4, the 2 is 2 thirds of the 3, and the 4 is 2 thirds of the 6. All right. Let's move on to another example. All right, so here we have a 
question mark, we can use a question mark to represent this, over 10 equals 2 over 5. So whenever we don't know a number, as in this box here, we look at the side that we do know, the part of the fraction that we do know. Now we know the 5 became a 10, right? And we're trying to find out the number on the left here. So we ask ourselves, what did we do to the right number, part of the fraction that we know, to get to the left number? So what did we do to the 5 to get to the 10? Now pause the video and think about it. And then what do you think? If you answer that you multiply by 2, you are correct. You multiply the 5 by 2 to get to the 10. So now you know what to do to the other right number, the one at the top, to find out what the number should be in this blank box. So we're going to multiply the 2 by 2. And that would give us a 4. So same operation as before, right? We multiply, the, we found out that we multiply the 5 by 2 to get to the 10. That means we multiply the 2 by 2 to get to the 4. All right, off we go to another example. So here we have again the bottom numbers that are known, right? So you can, uh, we're looking to get from the right to the left again, correct? So here it's a little bit different. What did we do to the 20 to get to the 4? Now the hint here is that the number is going down. So you have to decide, is this going to be a multiplication operation or a division operation? Think about it, pause the video, and when you're ready, continue. If you answered divide by five, you got it correct. To get from the 20 to the four, you would do division as the number is decreasing. So when the number decreases, you do division. When it increases, you do multiplication. Again, in this case, it decreases. So we do divide by 5. That automatically means that we're going to divide the 15 by 5. You guessed it. So what's the answer going to be? Well, it's going to be 3. And there you have it. Now that is a division operation. So we have arrived at the last example of this video. So what are our two fractions? We have 1 over 4 on the left side, and we have blank over 12 on the right side. Now, in this equation, we're looking to get from the left number up here, the one, to the right number. The right number is the unknown. So we're going to ask ourselves, what did we do to the 4 to get to the 12? Again, you should pause the video and see if you can answer this yourself. If you guessed that you multiplied by 3, good job. You multiply the 4 by 3 to get to the 12. So what do you do to the top number now? The same thing, right? You do the same thing. You multiply the one by three times three again, and your answer is going to be what's one times three? Oh, it's three. So there you go. So one over four is three over 12. And that is equivalent fractions. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're feeling more confident with equivalent fractions. If you feel like it helped you, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as there will be more videos along the way for all types of math and English lessons. Thank you for watching and have a great day and good luck in your studies. Bye.